Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, mahaba, moni muli wanji, namaste, jambo, bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so delighted and honored that you are joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is J.B. Frank. She is here to celebrate Count On Me, one, two, three, and also Somewhere in the City. Before we invite our guest into the studio, I'm really excited. I've been telling you all about the special series of episodes we're calling Protecting the Planet with Your Kids. With me right now is my co-host, Alexia Brown. Alexia, how are you? Hello, I am so good. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm really, really excited to share Protecting the Planet with our kids, with the, with the world. Can you give us a little hint about what, the, what these episodes are all about? Yeah, of course. And I am so, so, so excited for everyone to hear what we've been working on together, too. Um, Protecting the Planet with Your Kids is my little passion project. I've always wanted to do something like this. Um, It's basically we interview all types of authors um, who write about a lot of more science and planet-based material, And we kind of talk about how parents and kids can work together and learn together about our environment and how to best protect our planet. Yeah, and and these have been really, really fun. Um, One of the things that Alexia created in the show is that she is encouraging authors to suggest some activities, real fun activities that the parents and kids can do together to ignite their imagination and really get them excited. Um, what's been your favorite activity so far? Do you, do you, is there one that stands out? Hmm, I really loved um, Jody's. We had her on and she gave us a few worm crafts and I was a worm kid when I was younger. I loved playing with worms, and this is definitely a craft that I would totally do even nowadays, Um, and we got to x-ray a worm, Yeah. and it was so cool, and I really loved that craft. Yeah, that's our our episode with Jody Wheeler-Toppin, and it was really, really fun. And I had a great fun time learning that Alexia was a worm girl, and that was really cool. <laughs> also, really loved um, uh, it was Alan Hesse. He created this this uh, kind of like a board game that we can download that takes us all around the planet. That seems like a lot of fun for families to do. Yeah, and there was so much fun trivia. So it was like you were playing a board game, but you were learning all of these amazing facts about the Earth that I probably never would have known without even looking at the board game. Yeah. So it all starts on Earth Day, April 22nd, and it's going to follow for the following six Thursdays. We have some great, great guests. I also understand that we're going to be talking about how to capture um, stuff that's emitting from cows, and I, I don't want to tease it any more than that. <laughs> yes, it, that that one is going to be so much fun, and I am so excited to celebrate Earth Day with your family and learn something new about the Earth. Yeah, so join us starting April 22nd, Earth Day, for protecting the planet with your kids. Hey, Alexia, thanks so much. Of course. Join us right now from the Chicagoland area in Illinois. Our guest today is celebrating the release of two brand new books coming from our friends at Familius. We're going to start our conversation by talking about the book Count on Me 123. Please welcome to the show, J.B. Frank. J.B., welcome to the Reading with Your Kids (laughs) podcast. What a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Really happy to have you on. Chicago is a great place, and we've had so many great authors from the area. Tell us all about Count on Me 123, please. Well, Count on Me, uh, I wrote a number of years ago, 
um, we all know that children need a variety of people to raise them. Mm. And I had a reflective moment thinking, you know, who do I count on or who did I count on when I was a child? And I discovered that I count on quite a few people. Uh, other than my family. Mm-hmm. Of course, you're not on your family, but you have teachers and you have doctors and you have firemen and crossing guards. So um, the book was kind of a, a little twist for the parents' sake because count on me has a double meaning. You can actually count the people, mm-hmm. um, but also who can you count on is, is helping you raise your child. So it was a very uh, fun book and it's written in rhyme. And, um, and it's illustrated just lovely, really wonderful, um, uh, illustrator from Poland. And it just, so it's, it turned out so well, really, really, really lovely. Yeah. Now, Count on Me One, Two, Three is a board book. So we're talking about a great book for those really young ones who are, are, are still sitting in our laps and love to sit in our laps and, and when we're reading to them. And, um, this is probably, uh, a, a book that's going to be literally consumed by a lot of kids. I'm envisioning <laughs> a lot of kids chomping on some of the pages. I think you're right. I um, At the beginning, I read it to my great nieces who are three and four, and they were thrilled because they were able to see the art. They were pointing to the different people and counting them. And um, if the book had been available, they probably would have put it in their mouth as well. But they really enjoyed the the colorful uh, scenes that appeared at the different levels, you know, counting down from 10 to 1. And uh, yeah, so (laughs) I hope it will be consumed by um, many, many kids. Now, tell me, JB, why do you think it's important for kids to understand that there are more people that they can count on? They're just their, just their immediate family. Um, you know, COVID taught us a lot of things, and that isolation is never healthy. Um, and if you only count on your, on people close to you, I think the, the approach to the world might be a little hesitant. But if you realize there are so many people that really do care about you in a way of their job. You know, the fireman coming because he wants to protect you and get out the fire. Um, it uh, expands their world, makes them able to trust mm-hmm. and really experience love in a different way rather than just familial. It's, you know, it's the, it's the world. And that is very um, com- comforting for kids, I would think. Yeah. I agree. I think it's wonderful when we um, when we look and we realize that a lot of pe- a lot of people are doing some very dangerous jobs, very difficult jobs for not a lot of money, and I, I think for the most part they're doing it out of love. Yeah, and, yeah. That- and you have to remember too that not everybody's gonna be the kind of person you want them to be. Sometimes teachers let students down. You know, sometimes people don't do a good job. But if you take the whole book and you see all these 10 different people, you realize that there is a depth to it that can help you through, you know, if you are feeling a little isolated, when you think of these people, it's amazing. I mean, I didn't get everybody. There's a ton of people that you can add to it as Mm -hmm. well. Mm-hmm. I, and you know that's a, that's something interesting. I'm I'm imagining that after reading Count of Me One Two Three, one of the things a family can do is to just sit down and to name the people in our lives that we can count on. I think mean, that's a great exercise. I think they'll expand even the parents' thinking. Oh, you know, there's not only aunts and uncles. There's garbage men. There's uh, electricians. I mean, there's all kinds of, if you start to look at people working with each other and for each other, the world changes a great deal. You know, it really does. And, you know, one of the things, uh, you know, I, I, I present educational magic shows around the country. And one of the things that kids always talk about is that I'm so cool that I know how to do magic. And uh, one of the things I try to explain to them is, is, that you know i'm i'm doing tricks up here but uh, you have something in your pocket maybe not if you're 3 or 4 years old but you know typically kids in in elementary and middle schools they all have phones they have this technology 
that is amazing and allows them to take pictures and make movies and send messages all over the world, something I couldn't have even dreamt of when I was a kid. And it works through technology. Yeah, but it works because people all around the world have come together to create the network that allows it to work. And and to me, that's – when I think about the, the – Probably millions of people who who work to make that that one technology work. It really boggles my mind, and that seems really magical to me. Mm-hmm. And don't don't negate uh, not that you're negating the three and four year olds. Mm-hmm. Three and four year olds really appreciate magic, and they live in that that vein of whimsy, and they don't see the world as we see it. Um, I just. You know, I used to take care of my niece. I don't have children. And she would come up with these sayings, you know, pulling up the sun to start the day. Where where do they come up with these? (laughs) You know, they're like magic themselves, kids, which is, um, you know, they're they're really absorbing and and growing and seeing things in a different way. It's such a such a joy. Yeah. Well, speaking of joy, you must be filled with joy because, of, of course, Count of Me 1, 2, 3, it's, it's just released here in, in the month of April. Um, and, and we've had authors on who've been really excited because they had you know, the rare opportunity to have two of their books released in the same year. But you're having two books released in the same month. Um, <laughs> Somewhere in the City is also being released by fam- our friends at Familius. What's that feel like? Well, I'm a little overwhelmed. I'm, this is my, these are my debut books. Mm-hmm. I've, I've been published in magazines, but not books. And I want to do them right, you know, and because Familius is so wonderful with the promotion and helping you be able to uh, get the word out about these books. There's so many books coming out, you know, that it's really helpful and not as, you know, you, you feel like you have a shot at getting someone's attention. Mm. And that's what I worry about as not worry, but work on to help, you know, make sure that the word gets out there about these two books yeah. uh, as, as any author would probably feel. Yeah. Well, I, I want to get into and, and talk about somewhere in the city, but before we do that, I mean, you, you bring up a good point that we talk a lot about here on the podcast. We have a lot of authors, a lot of aspiring authors, I, I think people are, I, I know people are very surprised when they hear how many books are released every single month. It's in the thousands. Mm-hmm. And you're right, it's really difficult for um, for a book to stand out amongst that, 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 that mob of books that are published every single month. My biggest pet peeve is when you look at the best-selling books, mm-hmm. well, now it's Dr. Seuss, of course, <laughs> but <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of books that are out there have been um, books that are not old, old, but pretty old. Mm-hmm. And we have so many wonderful picture books coming out that I wish I could see them in the top 20 or the top 30. But people still uh, kind of lean back on the tried and true and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I, you know, I certainly applaud all of those authors, but I wish they would expand their horizons a little bit. And that's our job to help get, um, uh, parents and teachers. Our uh, teachers are pretty great about it and librarians are fantastic about it, but get parents to say, okay, there are other books out there. Let's try them. Let's see what else is out there and to try and encourage them to, to take a, you know, by giving information about your book so they understand why it would be important for their child to read it and what will help them uh, explain or have a conversation with the child. Like Count on Me 1, 2, 3 is definitely a book that you can sit and talk to your co- child about, other people that they can count on. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of wonderful books out there, and I only wish that we keep, we are, we keep pushing to try and get those books to the forefront. Yeah. So let's let's let everybody know what Somewhere in the City is all about. Well, Somewhere in the City um, has um, it, it just evolved into this wonderful story. It's an homage to my father, who who has since passed. But um, um, the story 
of how I got to it, actually. Um, my um, typical writing day, you're staring at a blank piece of paper and you're wondering, you know, where am I going to get the next in- inspiration? And um, I wasn't getting any. So I did what every um, wonderful writer would do is look to my emails to see if there was anything there that would inspire me. And my niece, Annie, had um, um, had a, an email that said, somewhere in the city, a little girl is singing when she should be sleeping. Mm. And that just sent chills. So I wrote it down immediately. And then I started to craft a story around it. And, of course, my father came immediately to mind because, like most fathers of the 60s, he went to work. You never knew where he worked. He was, you know, God knows where. He took a bus and a subway or whatever that was. Um, and uh, so it evolved out of that simple, Annie's simple statement. And then because of my father, my memory wow. of him. That's that's really neat. Um, what a what a great way for a story to be born. I think a lot of stories start that way for sure. I think you have to write from your personal experience, mm-hmm. and then it expands. Like this, uh, somewhere in the city, expanded because it's a little girl is looking out her apartment window. She lives above a store, which is very common in Chicago. I don't know about other places, but a lot of cities um, have apartments above stores Mm -hmm. and she's watching her neighborhood go to sleep, getting ready to go to bed. And at the same time, we get to watch the father make his way through the city. But the switch is that we see his journey through the city through an interpretation of a child's whimsical view of it. So he's not just waiting for, the light to turn red that he's you know a bunch of sheep are coming through his path to block him from walking through or or there's a penguin playing the saxophone or i mean it's just whimsical and wild my my illustrator um from china was just uh beautiful in that she took the father's journey and just created this circus atmosphere it's just really wonderful and it certainly could be a way that me that my childlike person would imagine his journey to be home yeah you know it's it's interesting that you're you're talking about um uh city life and so many apartments being over stores just yesterday um i was uh, with my beautiful wife we're driving through um the east boston neighborhood uh here in boston and uh it's where i lived was where, when i had my first apartment on my own and um we were in the air and i said did you did i ever show you my apartment here and she said no and we took a drive by it and i lived up over a store and it was wonderful and i showed my wife the the fire escape where i would sleep at night in the summertime because it was too hot to sleep (laughs) uh i love the illustrations in somewhere in the city um this is a book we talk a lot here in the program about uh, taking a picture walk with your child through a book before you start reading the story. Sometimes it's really fun to just take a look at the illustrations Ooh. and to imagine what the story might be. Um, it's uh, a, a, a great way to start conversation. It just gives you a different way to experience the book, and and I think it also helps with um, eventually with comprehending the story because it's helping the kids see all the little detail that might, they might have missed as they were listening to the story for the first time. Oh, that's an awesome idea! Yeah, and you know what's really cool about somewhere in the city, the artist starts every time you see the child. It's in a certain color palette. There's grays and blues. Mm-hmm. And every time you see the father, because it's in a circus atmosphere, vivid colors and really um, beautiful variety. And when they come together, the colors blend. Yeah. And it's really cool. Yes, that's something that I noticed as I was looking at the, at the illustrations. It, it really is unique in that way. Yeah, she just, she, uh, I, we, we had the chance of interviewing her. Um, for our launch and she just was saying how she really wanted to 
create two different worlds. She wanted to create the circus world and she wanted to create the child's world. And yet when, when we came together, that love, that mutual love between the father and daughter is then illustrated with this multicolor. And I thought, what a wonderful interpretation. It was just, it just gave me goosebumps again. It was just really, she's really something. Isn't, isn't that neat how picture books are able to tell a story in so many different ways and in 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 as you were talking about the illustrations and the choices that your illustrator made um telling the story in ways that you might not even notice uh you know what might be one of those subliminal um kind of storytelling um techniques uh, the the illustrator brings depth and heart to the story yeah. You can visually see the depth and the heart of it. Um, obviously, the words have to be there, but um, in, even in Count on Me, um, there is such depth and heart to each of the illustrations. So it's um, it's it's an it is a, it's another story going on, and that's where parents have the opportunity to really get into the story. And like you said, which is a wonderful idea, it's just kind of picture read, like mm-hmm. you said, mm-hmm. and allow the child to see the illustrations and start dreaming up or thinking up their own thoughts about the story. It's, that's a wonderful idea. Yeah. Now you, now you gave you, you let us know who your, your um, illustrator for economy one, two, three from Poland is. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but um, are you able to tell us who your illustrator from China is? Yes. Yu Lang. Excellent. Yu Lang was from um, Wuhan, China, and um, she very young, and um, well, everybody looks very young to me, but <laughs> she <is> very young. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <clears throat> but she tells a story, if I may. Mm-hmm. Um, I said to her, "What struck you about this uh, somewhere in the city?" And she told the story of her own life, of her mother being one way, very. Mm, uh, I don't remember the word she used exactly, but, you know, uh, kind of get your work done and, mm-hmm. you know, one, two, three, you know, kind of down the line. And the father, she said, gave me permission to dream. Oh. And I just thought that was amazing. And she said the story was, it, 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 that was what inspired her. Wow. Isn't that cool? That is really, really cool. And... You know, one of the things that, that I love about the podcast is, you know, a book is uh, it's such a great experience. But I think, uh, you know, when a parent has a chance to hear an author talk about the inspiration and something like that, something that inspired the illustrator um, and is able to remember that and then share that with the child as they're reading the book, I think it becomes – Again, it's a different way to experience the book, but it's also, I think, helps the child and, and also the parent make a, 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 a stronger connection with the author and the illustrator. And I think that is can be very powerful. And it makes sense, too, the way she did it, because at home, it's a very gray-blue, mm-hmm. but the father is this crazy, whimsical and so that was her interpretation of her parents. Not that the mother was bad. Please sure. don't get mm-hmm. me wrong. But it's it's the personalities of her parents. Yeah. It was kind of cool. Yeah, very cool. Tell me, what was that experience like? You know, you, you had written for um, magazines in the past, you, you said. But this is your, your, your debut books. And I'm um, imagining that, uh, you know, some authors tell me that it's really difficult sometimes when they – you know, sell their, their manuscripts to a publisher and then they realize that, wow, the publisher is going to go and uh, give this to an illustrator and I, I may or may not have much of a say and, 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 and I might not have any contact with the illustrator. How was that experience kind of letting go of your, of your new babies? Um, well, I come from a family of 14 uh, si- si- siblings. Ah, okay. And so the idea of letting go was actually easy for me because <laughs> if you have that many children, you have to, you can't hold on to everything, you know? <laughs> um, we lost one. Yeah, we got 13 more. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> but 
But I have to tell you, I'm not an artist. Mm -hmm. I'm a writer. And I had complete faith in Christopher Robin and choosing, because he was so excited to get Yuling, and really believe in his judgment and his vision for the book. And if you hold on to something tight, you miss the opportunities Mm -hmm. to see where it could go. Mm -hmm. So to be honest with you, I didn't really mind. I, I, I know my weaknesses and I knew that if there was something that was totally wrong, I would be able to voice my opinion mm-hmm. and Christopher would listen to it. Yeah. He does. He listens very well. And of course, Christopher that JB is referring to is Christopher Robin, the uh, president of, of, um, Familius Publishing and, and a former guest. And you can check our archives to listen to our interview with Christopher Robin. He was on early. You have to go deep into our, our archives. It's, um, it's, and it's really neat going back that far. I'm always amazed and how many wonderful guests that we've had on the show. So your two debut books, uh, published in, in the same month here in April 2021. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing you've caught the, the, the writing bug pretty badly. I've had that writing bug for quite a while. And um, so now is after learning, you have to, there's a learning curve here to promoting and social media, which is not something that I was very good at, but my niece, Nicole, has been helping me a great deal. Um, so once I everything gets settled down, I can get back to writing. I really miss it. And there's all these ideas that keep popping into my head. Thank goodness I have a little notebook that I that I write everything in to to when I sit down to to a blank screen, I can just open my book and get some ideas yeah. without having to go to my emails. <laughs> <laughs> Although that wasn't a bad choice. So, that you know. wasn't a bad choice. That wasn't, I, I, you know, I, I don't know if I've ever been inspired by an email. Annoyed, <laughs> irritated. Yeah, but I'm not sure if we <laughs> Fun inspiration. Hey, tell JB, tell everybody where we can go online to find out more about you and find out more about these two great books. You can go to jbfrank.net and I have links all over the place on my website to set, to get you to Familias or to get you to the place to order books. And, and one of the things that we really encourage folks now, especially during this time, of course, the books will be available on Amazon and be available through Familius' site. But if you have a favorite um, independent or local book seller, um, you can absolutely give them a call and say, hey, I'm really interested. The great new author I just heard on the Reading With Your Kids podcast, J.B. Frank. She has two books coming out from Familius. Here's the title. Can you order them? Can you get them into your shop? And they'll be there in a couple of days. Awesome. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. Thank you. We've had a great time speaking to the author of two books that are being published here in the month of April 2021. Count on me, one, two, three. And also, Somewhere in the City, both books are coming from our friends at Familius Publishing. And our guest today has been J.B. Frank. Hey, J.B., thanks so much for being with us. You have been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Great job. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Ruth Sparrow. She'll be here to celebrate Maxine in the greatest garden ever. Or as we say here in Boston, the greatest garden ever. That's the next episode of the podcast. And also be sure to mark your calendars, April 22nd, Earth Day. We are debuting. We are debuting protecting the planet with your kids. It's going to be fantastic. Don't you miss it. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so very wonderful. Of course, I want to start by thanking our guest, J.B. Frank. Be sure to check out Somewhere in the City and Count on Me, 123. I also want to thank my team, Alejandra Doherty, Fatima Khan, Hannah Pat Oboisky, Alexia Brown. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. And we all want to thank you. Thank you so very much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. 